It is mildly chilly and the clouds have sucked in. It <laughs> looks and feels like rain. George is just over here looking very suspicious. Yeah, he's looking very suspicious. He's all like, I am suspicious of what is going on right now. So we're in Etruria. We've been here for two nights and we are heading north on the Trenton Mersey. Um, Michael has an appointment at the Middleport Pottery to have a factory tour, which he's thrilled about. Fairly thrilled, yeah. <laughs> Mainly, I'm. my mom does, um, well, did, and sort of, I think the kiln is currently still sitting in my grandmother's place, but I'm not really sure. But there was a time when pottery and um, sculpture were an everyday thing in my childhood, and so there was lots of play about and everything. And, uh, yeah, so pottery is a very of interest, and I... Well, to your mother, really. Yes, well, there is, yeah, everything is of interest to me, <laughs> but got to go do a tour of some pots to so I can be like, this is what, this is what happens to clay in an English pottery. Um, and then after that, we're going to carry on north, possibly go th back through the Harecastle Tunnel to Red Bull. But, but we... at the very least, make it to the Harecastle. Yeah. All right, let's go. All right, let's go. This is a statue of James Brindley, the famous canal engineer responsible for building the Trenton Mersey Canal. I'm not sure if his hair was originally this white. It's time to say goodbye to the Calden Canal. It's been quite the adventure, but we now turn north onto the Trenton Mersey. Although it's not so much of a turn, more a case of merging in, in this direction at any rate. We're just on the north side of Stoke-on-Trent now, and in the area known as the Potteries. Stoke-on-Trent was formed by the amalgamation of six towns, Tunstall, Burslem, Hanley, Stoke, Fenton, and Longton. Earthenware, stoneware, and porcelain production grew here in the 17th century due to the local availability of clay and coal. Josiah Wedgwood was a major backer of the Trenton Mersey Canal when it was being proposed, and was keen for it to pass through Etruria, where his original factory was located. The canal site here is a little bleak. The majority of the works are long gone and modern industry and office buildings have moved in. So what we are now passing through is suburban industrial estates. This is the site of Burslem Port and the Burslem Branch Canal which ran for almost half a mile northeast from here. The branch was filled in in 1961 following a breach, but as the site has not been heavily developed there's an ambitious restoration and redevelopment proposal in place. We are passed by five boats in a row, and I guess that they have all traveled together through the Harecastle Tunnel, which is just a few miles north of us. We moor outside the Middleport Pottery about an hour before Michael is due to start his tour, so we have a little while to look around. They're very narrowboat friendly. The Pottery Factory tour was fascinating, as we were walked through the whole start to finish process of making burlyware in this still active working pottery. The Middleport Pottery was built by Mr. Burgess and Lee in 1888 as a model pottery, designed around a production line flow that was quite modern at the time, and very different from the haphazard design of earlier potteries. Raw clay and coal would arrive via canal barge, and the clay would be refined and pressed into slugs, and mixed into liquid slip using what was then very modern mechanized pumps and presses. Mm -hmm. 
All of this was driven by a massive steam engine, known as the Duchess, which was supplied by a huge Lancashire boiler. The modern pottery uses electricity, of course, but much of the Victorian era mixers and pumps and the complex system of sluices that recycles unused clay back into them remains in operation to this day. The tour was brisk, but I got to see the models and molds for casting hollowware and the fettling stations where mold lines are carved off by hand and smoothed with a damp sponge. Flatware is also made here in a largely automated process. Then all the greenware is dried before moving to the biscuit kilns. Back in the day, the greenware were loaded into the three huge bottle kilns that dominated this end of the site, but those have since been removed and replaced with more efficient gas-fired kilns, though one remains that couldn't be demolished without taking the building with it. We move through decoration stations where we see patterns being applied to the glazed wares, and we're shown how burly pottery still uses tissue transfer decoration, a time-consuming classic technique that's apparently still in use only here. Then down to see the final glazing stations and the huge modern kilns where everything is finished before packing. It's fascinating moving through a busy modern factory that's built within what is now a heritage museum. The packaged wares now go out by truck of course, but in the old days they'd have gone straight onto a canal barge to begin their journey to shops around the world. On a side note, if you watch the new series of Peaky Blinders, you might recognize some of the factory. Keep an eye out for some nasty business involving Chinese heroin. Tour over and Michael returns with tales of something about a soggy bottom whacker, and we set off north. We don't make it very far as we need to stop for diesel, so we pull over at Longport Wharf and fill our tank. There's a boat yard here, and lots of boats on brokerage, so it is quite an interesting place. Historically, the wharf was used to store raw materials and manufactured goods for the potteries, and some old warehouses and office buildings remain. These buildings have seen better days. I hope there are plans afoot to save them before it's too late. We have traveled through Middleport and Longport and now we're in Westport. A nature reserve has been created here and there are two large lakes it's a lovely spot after all that industry and development. It's just over a mile from here to the southern entrance of the Hare Castle Tunnel. If you watched our vlog when we came south, you will know that it's a one-way tunnel with tunnel keepers at each end controlling the flow of traffic. It started to rain. I wonder how long of a wait we'll have before we can go through. There's a boat coming out as we arrive. That's a good sign. Three more boats emerge, and then it's time for us to be briefed for our transit. There are two boats waiting ahead of us. After we have our lights and horn checked, we are sent on our way with a two minute gap between each boat. The tunnel is dark and damp. I really don't enjoy being underground and would much prefer to walk the two and a half miles over the top. I guess George would prefer that option as well. 
Driving through the tunnel is not particularly hard, but it does take quite a bit of concentration to avoid bouncing off the sides. The fact that the headroom keeps changing really doesn't help. Once again we forget to time our passage, but we think it took almost three quarters of an hour. We finally emerge onto the iron red waters of Kids Grove. It's not really recommended that you moor here overnight, so we need to continue on as far as Red Bull, which means doing at least two locks. As we have just come through the tunnel in a convoy, there will be a queue for the locks. This is the junction with the Macclesfield Canal, which will soon loop around and pass overhead on an aqueduct. There are two locks in operation at Plants Lock, so things move fairly quickly and we move down two by two, helping each other out as we go. At the next pair of locks, the towpath side lock is out of order, so proceeding to slow down considerably. Coming out of Lion Kilm Lock, there's quite an awkward angle to negotiate to get onto the aqueduct that carries the Macclesfield Canal. Such a shame that it's the towpath side lock that is out of use. It's been a long and interesting day, and we've had enough, so we decide to moor up here just before we get to the Red Bull Pub. Good news for the guys stuck behind us, especially as Michael decides to walk ahead and help them through the next lock. We're, We're in Red Bull. <laughs> it's been a funny old day. Yeah, it's been a funny old day. I've got some sort of sinus headache or something. I'm going to put Michael to bed. Yeah, or maybe. Or possibly we'll just go to the pub and get me drunk. Because that's a well-known cure for a headache. I don't know. I've never been drunk in my life. We've made it through the Hercastle Tunnel. After stopping at the Middleport Pottery and at Longport to get diesel. That's why it's been a funny cruise. Because we left a bit later because we knew we had to be at Middleport around 10-ish, which we were. Mm -hmm. And then we had, we had like two or three hours at Middleport. Then we stopped at Longport for like 20 minutes or half an hour. Then we pushed on up and got to the Harecastle Tunnel, and in the last like 30 seconds before we got to the Harecastle Tunnel, it started to rain a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and then we got to the Harecastle Tunnel, and the rain stopped, and we waited for a while. Not that long. The boats were just coming out as we got there, so... Yeah. Well, three of them came out. And then yeah. we waited for quite a long time for the last one to come out. And the last one came out, went past, and we got shoved through two minutes between each boat, so there was plenty of... I don't food. think it was two minutes. I think he said two minutes. He said two minutes. But it wasn't two minutes, and like the boat behind us was definitely going faster than us, so yeah, I had this anxiety that was like we were going to get rammed, which was ridiculous because we they weren't actually anywhere near us. And also, they were, even if they got near us, they're not going to drive into us. No. So me and George didn't enjoy the journey. He wasn't worried about them being rammed. He just didn't like it generally. <laughs> and me, I was ducking all the pieces of concrete and rock that come down off the roof in there. And then the problem with coming north through the tunnel is they obviously send the boats through in batches and I think at least five or six boats came through in our batch. We were number four. No, we were number three. So everyone gets the locks on the other side together. Yeah. It's really funny, in that first lock, so the two boats, the two front boats went down and then I walked up just to help them through and then get it ready for us. And the boy on the first boat was a bit confused, didn't really know what was going. And he just walked off and I was like, don't worry, I'll do it. And I was kind of joking, but also like, you know, making a bit of a point, like, don't worry, I'll do it. And then the boy on the boat looked up and went, thanks, Joe. And that really threw me. And I was like, oh no, he heard me being like a sarcastic, passive aggressive bitch. And knew who you were. But I was like, it was in good humor the way I said it. We had all sorts of problems with cameras stopping working. So I don't know what footage I've got today. Yeah. One of our cards just filled up at the last second. So I'm worried that, because it wasn't the 16, it was the 64, so I'm worried that we've been filming, not in time lapse. Yeah. And then um, at this lock, the one there, there's only one lock working. So everyone's going through one by one. And then the boat woman on the boat behind us comes up and is like, come on, Michael. <laughs> we didn't say your name, but she's like, come on, you can go through this one. We were like, it's not working. That's why we're not using it. <laughs> to be fair, 
you kind of have to kneel down to see the labels that say, please don't use this lock. Yeah, it's but, waiting, repair, or, well, waiting repairs. Yeah, but, like, well, I think she was just being keen. So she was lovely. She was a nice woman. On, on, on one of the earlier ones, I'd gotten the question, do both of them go in the same direction? <laughs> and I was like, well, actually, they both go in, in both, both directions. directions. <laughs> well, what? I have a headache, and I can't keep going. Yeah. No, but it's been a lovely day because I got to visit the potteries, and I got to see, um, you know, burly wear being made. It's funny, Michael came back to the boat, and then we had lunch, and he was talking like some pottery pro using all these, like, technical pottery terms and stuff. Because I learned about fettling. Fettling sounds cool. And not really, but it sounds, I mean, it, it sounds, you know, it's a skilled job. And, uh, yeah, and there was the... the um, well, what about the butt, pat, butt patter? The butt patter? Yeah. Butt patter. Oh, you mean the, the, um, <clears throat> the bottom knocker? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's the butt patter. <laughs> like it's a butt patter. That's not right. <laughs> yeah. So there's these, um, oh, what are they called? She's talking about the job known as the Sager Maker Bottom Knocker. And a Sager is a, clay receptacle into which you put the actual um, wares, like the the flatware generally. So if you're doing plates, you make one of these saggers, and a sagger is essentially like a clay box that you put the plates into. And so you make the bottom using an iron form, and you put clay into the iron form, and then the sagger maker, ba bottom knocker, the sagger maker bottom knocker, takes a big mallet called a maul and hammers the clay into the iron form. Then there's a guy who has uh, another piece that he rolls clay around and they attach it together and glue it together and you've made the sagger. And then the sagger is what you put the plates into and you stack them up using these little tiny porcelain pieces of sort of handmade um, uh, props and stuff to get everything equally distanced from each other. And while you're doing this, you're filling it up with flint that's what the flint mills are for because you need milled flint to put in among the pieces of um, flatware so that you end up filling up the sagger then the sagger goes onto the top of the head of a guy who goes in and carries it into the bottle kiln where they get stacked and then the whole thing ends up getting fired so it's quite a fascinating complicated process and the sagger maker bottom knocker has not been a job in this country since the 1960s. Now, there are people who are not Sager Maker Bottom Knockers. So yeah, fascinating stuff. So fascinating. <laughs> um, I got some cool shots of some like slip being, um, you know. See slip, who knew what slip up. is? Slip, my mom knows what slip is. Slip is clay that has been heavily liquefied for use in molds if you want to make hollowware not flatware. Yeah, it's fun going to Longport Wharf. Michael commented that we drove up and we went to look at the boats two years ago. Didn't see one bottle kiln, even though we were right by them. They were right. We were right by one bottle kiln. We were kitty cornered to another from the top of that bridge. My guess is you can see all 46 of the remaining bottle kilns, or at least a good portion of them. So the fact that we drove up there and the only thing we were noticing was the rain. And the narrow boats. And the narrow boats. It was like, rain, narrow boat, come out! We do not care about... So, yeah. Good day. We're three locks into... No, we're two locks into Heartbreak Hill. Yep. We're going to take a day off. We don't have to now. We don't have we to now, do we? Yeah. Maybe we won't take a day off. We'll see. But we're going to continue up Heartbreak Hill and I would get back to Middlewich. I would suggest, though, that when we do leave here... We leave before any boats have a chance to come through, come through the tunnel. Oh yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Early morning. Yeah. yeah. We go at eight. It yeah. should be fine. Good. So, should we go to the pub? If you want to. How are you feeling? I don't really want to, but I can totally support getting off the boat and stuff, and I'll enjoy it when we're over there. Okay. So, yes? If you want to, I said. I want to. All right. We go to pub. We go, we go to Red Bull pub. We, we do not have Red Bull. We go now? We go now. Oh, we do not have Red Bull Pub. Why are we waving our finger? Well, uh, just because I thought it was funny that it kind of can do that right now. It's like, ooh. I'm so cursing you when I edit this. <laughs> but you love me. You're alright. Thank you for watching. If you feel like being a Sager Maker Bottom Knocker, go talk to the people at Burley and Middleport Pottery. Otherwise, 
give us a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe if you feel like hearing more of this nonsense, and hit the bell if you want to get notifications about it. There was a thing called a bell test where you would take a new piece of pottery and cling it together after the first biscuit bake, and then if it didn't clang, you'd, you'd throw it out. What if it broke? If it didn't make a bell noise. Well, if it, if, it made, if it didn't make a bell noise, it meant there was a flaw, so you threw it out. You'd smash it, in, you know, so that it wouldn't get used by accident. Fascinating stuff. Anything else? Nope, I'm done. seconds of talking but not saying anything. Jojo would agree with this. We appear to be partly cloudy all day but no rain so let's hope the chickens Stop and the gizzards. Stop talking about the chickens. No one knows what you're talking about when you talk about the chickens. It's when astrologers try and... I know. And... Okay. I know. All right. Everybody must go to town. Oh, I've gotten back to fun. Sonia, you falling on head. I stone you till you eat bread. I stone you till you run to be the man. Can we start? I could not feel so all alone. I did this. Yeah, everybody must go to stone. My whole arm red bull. Leaving stone. A nerd. K N U R D. Uh, right. Are we going to do this properly? Sure. Are yeah. we just going to make noises at the camera? No. You want to make noises at the camera now? You're desperate to. I like making noises. <laughs> yeah. Especially when it's got me in fuzzy focus mode and I look sexy. Why am I so in fuzzy focus mode? I'm in definitely fuzzy focus mode. Yeah. Isn't the camera the thing to the left? Oh, that? Yeah. As opposed to the microphone? That's not a microphone. Put your finger over the other thing. Now put your finger over the... Yeah. See? Now which one of those is the camera? No, it's not a microphone. Well, uh, I didn't say that wasn't the camera. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it's not the... Like... Rough clay. Hold on one second. I can remember. I can remember. We're just accessing the archives. Accessing the archives. The headache is not helping. Um, lagger? Leaner? Nope. Um, scraggle bum. Not scraggle bum. It's a scraggle bum. Where's my know. phone? I don't know actually. I'm going to get up. You're, you're attached. Sagger! Found it! Remembered! And then the Sagger bagger. Sagger? Mm -hmm. This is a statue of James Brindley, the famous canal engineer responsible for building the Trenton Mersey Canal. I'm bored. Can you tell? The package wears no go. The package wears no go. The package wears no. Mm -hmm. There's a boatyard here and loads. Loads? Loads of goats. <laughs> loads, loads of bots. It's been a long and interesting day, and we've. It's been a long. It's been a long and. God's sake.